But without further ado, let's read this psalm. <laughs> Y'all know what it is. The Lord is my shepherd. Amen. What? I shall not want. <laughs> what he do? He making me lie down in what? Green pastures. He leading me behind what? Still waters. Ow! He restored my soul. Amen. He leading me in the path of righteousness <laughs> for his name's sake. Y'all know this one for sure. Yay! <laughs> Though I walk through the, the valley of the shadow of death, what? I will feel no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy step comfort me. Thou prepareth a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with all. And guess what? My cup runneth over. <laughs> What's next, y'all? Surely, <laughs> goodness and mercy shall what? Follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In Jesus' name, thank you for this text, Lord. Thank you for this song. I pray, Father God, that you uh, bring to remembrance everything I studied, looked at, that you would take over, Father God, and I would decrease there, Lord. So thank you for this word, dear Lord. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name, amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen. All right, so when I, I first looked at this, you know, David, thank you all, brothers. Thank you all so much. You know, uh, D David is one of my favorite characters in the Bible. One of my most important people, I, I, I tend to always go back to uh, 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 David's text when, he, when, he, when they talk about him in 1 Samuel, when, they, when, when he, all, uh, a bunch of his, 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 these psalms were written by David. And so as, I, as I, I look, as I sometimes have a hard time in my life, as I sometimes struggle in my life, I go back to these psalms and they bring me comfort, they bring me answer. A lot of times in the funerals, you know, I, I preach from a psalm, you know, because it brings comfort. I love David so much because David uh, uh, is not scared to, ch to, to share his heart, what's really going on. And as, as a man and as men, sometimes it's hard for us to share what's really going on. So when I read David, it gives me comfort to really share what's going on in inside, in, inside of me. And so that's why I always run back to David. And, 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 and this psalm is no different. This psalm was written uh, 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 later in his life. If you study this psalm and if you read this psalm and if you look at this psalm, you can see that it wasn't written by no new, new believer. It wasn't written by uh, uh, a novice. It wasn't, written by, it wasn't written by somebody that ain't never had nothing happen to them in their life. As you read this, you can see that this was uh, uh, written by a man that, that went through a few things in his life. <laughs> and, 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 and they say this psalm was written in the later parts of David's life. And, and as David looked back over his life, and as David looked back all the things that happened to his life, all the people that tried to kill him, all the, 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 the people that tried to overthrow him in his throne, the pe the, all the things that he tried to, uh, 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 you know, conquer against, you, you can see that he went through these things. Minister Sam, no, Minister Sam, you know, he, he, can, he, can, he, can, he can look at a man, he can talk to a man, he say, man, that man ain't been through nothing. You're still wet behind the ears. <laughs> you ain't did nothing. You ain't had nothing. You, you ain't even got a scratch on your finger yet. I didn't met people that had been through some stuff. And look, they, they, they talk differently than somebody that haven't been through some stuff. And Minister, ain't they good, you know, so as I read this, I was, uh, 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 I, I came to a conclusion that if, if anybody needs to learn this, I need to learn what this psalm really means. It, it's all, and, and you know what? Let me tell you the truth. You know, since I was talking about David, you know, uh, 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 not scared to share what's really inside of him, or not scared, not, not scared to show, you know, what really happened in my life and whatnot, but, you know, it's not no bad thing, but, you know, for uh, deaconess, uh, Aristine's funeral. You know, uh, some, you know, somebody called me and they said, you know, if one, uh, if one of the ministers or a couple of the ministers could say, you know, the first and second reading. So I say, all right, I'm going to do the first. I didn't know what the text was. Well, they say, you're going to do Psalm 23. <laughs> but look, Minister Sam, I was studying a whole different uh, thing, but it had to do with Del, uh, 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 David. I was studying in, in 1 Samuel, and I say, you know, because uh, 
as I was studying, I was going, I was going to tackle it. I was going to have to knock down some days. I was going to have to, you know, uh, stay up some late nights to try to figure out this first Samuel text I was first studying for this Bible study. But, you know, as I, I, as I thought about Psalm 23 and I look at it, I say, wow. You know, I felt the impression of the Lord, you know, giving me the go ahead to talk about this Psalm 23. Because I said back in the days I was going, I was going to study this. And if I had a chance to teach it, I was going to teach it. Because, you know, I, I hear it. You know, even as a, a, a Bible teacher, even as a, a believer, I've read through this text. I've, I've looked at this text. I've heard people quote it. I've heard people quote parts of it. And I was like, man, let me see what this means. Since it's so popular, let me see, you know, because as a Bible teacher, when I hear somebody say something, I want to discover, you know, what that mean. Even uh, uh, certain words, even certain uh, vocabulary words I hear from people, I'll be like, you know, Acting like I know what it means, but next time, I'm going to get it. Because, <laughs> you know, I, I, don't, I don't like to be, you know, when I hear it again, I like to have a chance that I'm going to know it. So God will give me a second chance to know it. So furthermore, in this psalm, you know, it, it, it's so much. It, it starts off, the Lord is my shepherd. And I'm going to have four points tonight, but we're probably going to get maybe two, maybe one. We're just going to see. Uh, my first point is the rest. My second point is the recovery. My, my third point is the restoration. And my fourth point is the reward. The reward is going to take probably a whole Bible study, so I know I'm not going to even get a chance to touch this, Mr. George. So, but y'all, y'all be praying for me. And while I'm thinking about this, if y'all have some texts that y'all been looking at, if y'all have some texts that y'all confused about, ask the ministers. Or even, you know, ask me if I'm going to ever teach from this text, you know, and I'm still uh, 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 in control by, by the Lord, so he, he has to give me permission to teach this. But if, I'm, if y'all ask me, I'm going to study it, and, and when God gives me the liberty to teach it, I'm going to teach it. Yeah, so if y'all have a text that y'all travailing over, get, bring it to me. Bring it to me. Y'all ain't any of the other ministers, but I don't want to speak on their behalf, but me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just, I felt you. <laughs> we already got enough homework as it is. I got some more homework for y'all further along in this text. But let's start with the first point, y'all. The rest. And I have seven sub points, my people. <laughs> yeah, you could, you could list, you could put them some. I'm, 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 I'm gonna read them. Sub point A is the Lord. So point B is, is my shepherd. So point C, I shall not want. So point D, he maketh me lie down. So point E, green pastors. So point F, he leaded me. And so point G, besides the still waters. I, I, I could not pass up this first verse without explaining almost every important word in this first verse. You know, because uh, 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 this first verse has so much meat, so much meaning behind it, I could not just skim over it. I wanted to go through the whole uh, uh, Psalm 23 today, yeah, believe me, I wanted to, but there was no way. I, 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 could, I could give this text, script, uh, this, this, this text uh, uh, you know, it's just the, the, the do that is, uh, is, is rightfully uh, uh, deserved. So, you know, let's start off with the Lord. Yeah, yeah, some of y'all Bible, Bible scholars might be saying, yeah, we know this is the Lord. But we have some newbies in here that don't know what the Lord. And if we look in the Hebrew text, the Lord right here means Jehovah. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> the, the true eternal God, the living God, the being who is absolutely self-existent, the one who in himself present essential life and permanent existence. The one who always exists, eternal and unchangeable. Amen. Isaiah 43 says, what does Isaiah 43 say? You are my witness, say the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no form, no God formed, neither shall there be after me. <laughs> Boy, that thing fire, huh? Y'all like that, y'all like that. Do I have some more? Do I have enough? I, even I, am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior. Twelve, I have declared and I have said and I have showed 
when there was no strange God, when there was no strange gods among you, therefore you are my witnesses, said the Lord, that I am God. This is the God we're talking about, my people. When he said the Lord, the Lord, this is the Lord. I could finish the if I if I I wanted to just stop there. We could have spent some time right now, Minister Sam, just talking about the Lord, uh, 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 Je Je Jehovah. We could have talked about Jehovah Nisi. We could have talked about Jehovah Jireh. But no, I, I got to, you know, I got to move on. I got to travel a little bit more further. And, and, and why, why, why does David say this? David, David says this because he knows who this God is. He's had dealings with this God. He's seen God move for him, Miss Linda. He's seen God do the miracles. Isn't it? He's seen God get him out, out, of, out of tight spots. When there was no way out, he saw this God yes, rescue him. This God uh, 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 shut the mouth of lions. You know what I'm saying? Shut, uh, did, did the most uh, 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 hardest thing, uh, uh, came through for, for David. When Saul was after David, when, when Saul was throwing them spears at David. This God was the one that, 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 that made it not stick to him, that made him not kill him. That, that, you know, this was the one. This is why David says, the Lord. And we got to distinguish about this Lord because he says also, I'm getting ahead of myself, in, in, in Psalms 102, points, uh, verse 27, but thou art the same, <laughs> and thy years have no end. He, the, the same God that was helping our David is the same God who's here today. The same, that God, the same God that's right here in this room. The same God. This right now, that guy, that guy. I have to make a distinction between this because you know you could be serving some other guy. You could be like 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 he said, the Lord. You know some 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 other things could be lording over you. <laughs> when when he says the Lord, the Lord, he has complete control. He's the one that Lord. He's the one that 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 uh 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 uh. uh pushes things through. This is the one that makes his things up. He lords over things. And we could have, what, what, what can we have lording over us right now? The, the, most, the first thing that comes, you could have drugs lording over your life. You could have the emotions lording over your life. You could have uh, this one and that one lording over your life. But do you have God lording over your life? Is God in control of your life today? Is God is the one that's making decisions for you? Is the God that's giving you direction? Is the God that's saving you? That is the God that you are serving today? I got to ask that question. And you got to ask that question. Is this the God you're serving today? Is, the God you, is this the God you brag about? Is this the God that you hear pastor talk about? That is, the, is this the God that I'm, I'm talking about right now, the God that I believe in, the God that I call on to save me and change my life? Is that the God you serve today? What are you letting the Lord do today? I got to make the distinction. <laughs> what are you letting lording over you right now? Think about it. <laughs> and we're going to change that today. Before you leave. Before you leave, before you leave. God, yeah, I'm just on sub point A. <laughs> I'm not going to make it. <laughs> sub point B. He says, is my shepherd. <laughs> you know, when, when David said this, Miss Charlene, 
<laughs> he, he, he know that God is his God. You know, we think that we, 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 we need to be this big. We need to be something else. We need to do this for God to pay attention to, to God, for God to be our personal God. But all you have to do is call upon him. Amen. Make him your personal God. Yes. <laughs> you, you, you see, this David was saying this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, tell, I'm telling you about the Lord. But this is my Lord also. The Lord that, that, that did personal things, the Lord that, that answered prayers that I only I knew, the Lord that got me out of situations only I knew I was in. That personal God, the God that woke you up this morning, the God that opened up your eyes, the God that got you here safe in your, in your car, the God that protected your house, the God that kept you while you was uh, uh, riding through that deep water. <laughs> A personal God, you know. Because cause, cause everybody could say, uh, 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 you know, they, they know Michael Jordan because you got Jordan's on, because you got Jordan in paraphernalia. But if Jordan see you, he ain't going to say, he ain't going to say, what's up, you? <laughs> but I, I, I bet you they got some people in Jordan's life that could call Jordan right now and know him personally. Know, know what Jordan dislikes, know what Jordan likes, know what he likes to eat, know what time he go to sleep, know what uh, uh, his name of his children, his grandchildren. No, his mama's maiden name. No, the, the, the old uh, uh, address to his house he grew up in. Yes, sir. That's the difference between you uh, uh, knowing about God <laughs> and you having a personal relationship with God. You see, uh, 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 after living for God a few years, you're going to learn to call him your personal God. You're going to learn to call him God like you know him because he knows you and you know him. He knows everything about you. A personal God <laughs> is my shepherd. Then, then I, I feel like David is bragging. That's, that's, that's my God. That's my God. When, when, when you hear somebody talk about your God, how you at? <laughs> do you act sassy? Do you act uh, uh, like you want to break something off because they're talking about your God? Don't fight. Don't fight, Hebrews. Don't fight. But, but do you speak up when people talk about your God? Yes, this is what David is making a declaration that <laughs> he is my shepherd. Yes. <laughs> First Samuel says, and Samuel said unto Jesse, and hear all thy children. You see, you see, David is remembering how he was called out from the least of them. Yes. How, how you, when, 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 when you think about God, when you, when you think about how God took you from the least and made you the most, when, when God took you from a nobody and made you somebody, when God took you as a dead person and made you alive, this is what you got to think about. And what, this is what David is thinking about when he says, God, the Lord, is my shepherd. David is remembering, <laughs> let, let's go to 1 Samuel 16, 11, and we're going to see what the text says about that. And he said there is, remain it yet. Okay, I can't read my hand right. And Samuel said unto Jesse, are here all the children. And he said, there remain it yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, send and fetch him, for we will not sit down Till he come thither. David is remembering this when he was a little shabby boy. And we're going to read further along in this text. God had him shepherding his, his, his dad's sheep so he could have been ready for, to be a king, to be a shepherd himself. So, so what you're going through, what you're going through as a youngster right now, or you have gone through a youngster, don't think God is not going to waste that. God don't waste nothing. God, don't, you, you think this was trivial? You think this was by accident that he had him uh, learning what a sheep needs, uh, learning what uh, it takes to nourish a sheep, to protect a sheep, to, 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 to guide a sheep in that direction. David was learning this. So don't think it trivial. Don't think it just by accident what has happened in your life. I'm talking about good and bad. Because the bad stuff that happened to you, you're going to be able to preach to somebody else. Look what I did. Look what God did for me to get out of this. So the providence of God, the providence of God, everything in, 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 in your life, 
was by design. <laughs> Everything in your life was for a purpose. Everything in your life was uh, uh, meant to, to guide you to a specific, end, a specific purpose that God has for you on this earth. And you think you're not important. You listen to what other people say about you. You listen to what other people, how they look at you. You're looking at what other people is saying about what you got and what you don't have. But you're forgetting about what God say about you. And that's what's most important. But this is what David was looking at when he was saying this, this first part of this first verse. You see, David was quite familiar with the importance of sheep having a shepherd. We, the, the last part is my shepherd. <laughs> he, 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 he knew what it was to be a shepherd. So he, he, he had some familiarity about what a shepherd looks for in a sheep. So he, he, he stooped to a sheep, David, so he could have been governed by the shepherd. Yeah. I'm talking about the Lord Jehovah. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all understand? Y'all get what I'm saying? Yes, you see how God in his ways, my people? Yes. David knew that the shepherd would supply all his needs. David knew the shepherd would guide and lead him. <laughs> David knew that this shepherd would protect him from enemies, would protect him from harm and danger. David knew this about a shepherd. And, 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 and also, he knew that the shepherd would, was the one that, that, that uh, uh, cared for him, the one that nurtured him, the one that led him. He knew that because he was a shepherd himself. <laughs> so he was familiar with that. See, he knew firsthand what it is and how important it is to have a shepherd. More important how having Jehovah as your shepherd and a shepherd in your life, Pastor Omar, yes. preferably everybody here, preferably. Yes. I, I, and I'm going to say it uh, scripturally correct. I'm going to say it theologically correct. I'm the shepherd of the great shepherd. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm going to follow this shepherd while he follow the great shepherd. Amen. But the importance of having a shepherd in your life, and I'm talking about Pat, somebody that is, uh, 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 is covering you, somebody that is over your life, because I, I, I think back about my life 20 so years ago when, 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 when God brought me to this little Bible study, when God brought me on the Pastor Omar, when God brought me on the First Lady, I, I think about how much they have uh, governed, directed my life, uh, 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 and, and, learned, and, and, and taught me how to, how, to, how to find direction myself, how to, how, to, how, to, how, to, how to search the scriptures, how to pray, how to treat other believers. The importance of having a shepherd in your life. Some of y'all think, you know, y'all y'all out here just living, you know, on your own, and I got it all together. I can do it without, you know, uh, God. I can do it without a pastor in my life. I can do it without coming to church. Yeah, that's true. But I guarantee, like that old man used to say about that fool, your life is not going to be filled with peace. <laughs> your, your life is not going to be filled with directions. Your life is not going to be filled with a uh, uh, purpose, direction. Your life is not going to be filled with nourishment, with understanding of, 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 of why you are here, why you are put in this earth. I don't know about y'all, but I want to know those things. I, as I get older in the feed, Minister Sam, Miss Leola, look, Miss Linda, I ask God, you got to show me where I need to go, man. Because look, this old flesh sometimes cut up, Miss Lou, you know what I'm saying? It, 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 the flesh want, want, want me to go this way, Tyrone. The flesh want me to do that. You know, my, 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 my brain wants me to uh, figure out this and, and do that and, and, and make assumptions and, 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 and be guided by my emotions. But believe me, I need a shepherd, man. <laughs> this is what David is saying in this text. He's saying, in the sub point B I have, the Lord is my shepherd. Having a shepherd in your life is detrimental to your success and the direction of your life. <laughs> Throughout the, having, having a bad shepherd is, whoo! When, when you've been under a bad shepherd, you know how good it is to have a good shepherd. Go talk to them old saints that done been through a few churches, that done been uh, uh, church hurt, that done been destroyed, that almost taken away from the faith. Yes, talk to them old saints and see how good you got it over here. Yeah. Yeah. A good shepherd. Yeah. A 
good shepherd. Through this text, we're going, we, we are going to discover the, the, the shepherding of our God, Jehovah, and also the shepherding of a flock by our pastor and our pastor. Deacon Chavis, we always talk, he has a book uh, that y'all might want to check out in the bookstore about learning to pray for your shepherd. Amen. Just important. That, I ain't going to say it, but point, point two. I mean, book two, book three, we're coming up. But just important as you having a shepherd, you got to learn how to be a good sheep. Because some of y'all sheep, y'all cut up. Y'all give that shepherd problems. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man, yeah, the, the shepherd tell you going this, this way, but you go that way. The shepherd tell you to do this, but you do the opposite. You're stubborn and you're bullheaded. Yes. Let me tell you something. I didn't been under this man a long time. Yes. <laughs> and look, we ain't, we ain't no man worshiping around here. And also, that man won't let you worship him. He might slap you. But let me tell you something. This man didn't correct a lot of times. The stuff that he didn't preach on, 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 on these Bible studies and preached over this airwaves have come true. Yes. Amen. <laughs> About the Hebrews. <laughs> but my people, remember this. Learn how to be a good sheep. Learn how to be a good sheep. I don't want to say what they say about a sheep, but we're going to get this further on unless I, 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 you know, I offend somebody because I, I do care about y'all. <laughs> but, sub point C, I shall not want. Because I'm serving this guy, because I didn't have dealings with this guy, I didn't see God uh, uh, do many things with him, I shall not want.
I've learned how to rest. I, you know, I, I grew up in a, a, a family of, of hard workers, Kip. You know, some horses, some work hard, workaholics. You know, they know how to work hard. I know how to work hard. But I didn't know how to rest. <laughs> I didn't know how to take a day off. I didn't know how to uh, uh, go to bed in time. Go to bed early. I didn't know how to rest my bones. Like my mama used to say, rest your bones, child. But I learned it. Just as doing the work, uh, uh, in the flesh, alive, awake, you have to do the same amount of rest. Now, I'm not giving you liberty to sleep all the time, sleeping late, that you're going to be late for work. Now, you're going to say, Minister Ed told me to sleep a little longer. I didn't tell you that. Get your rest. Rest your bones, my people. <laughs> David is saying he making me lie down. You got you to gotta have some downtime. And I've learned even, even if you're not sleeping, just chilling is enough. Yes. Just sitting down and chilling. Just, you know, cooling out, watching, you know, a little, little favorite little show, some fishing, some hunting, cultural. That's what I like, but I'm, you know, something like that. But what it does, it, it, it eases. All, all this nervousness, all this anxiety, all this uh, uh, wanting to do this, have so many ideas, it brings calmness to my spirit. Calmness. What also? Extracurricular activities. I made it through. <laughs> but do something. Have you, if you like boxing, if you like building, if you like fishing, if you like uh, 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 construction, if you like, have some extracurricular activities. Hey, Paula, do you something that you like to do. Go play you some, go play you some video games. Not all the time, but play you little video games. You know, something that you like. If you, you like to crochet, if you like to, I don't know, build, build, I mean, uh, make clothes, sew, you know, things like that, anything. Do hair, something. That's all under the, the guise of, 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 of resting. And, and, and also, if you're in ministry, do something that ain't got nothing to do with ministry. Let me say that. If you're in ministry, do something that ain't got nothing to do with ministry. And if you're working on, let me, let me tell you, I, I didn't been burned out 17 and 100 times. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I... <laughs> Maybe, maybe a little less, 1699. But I have some projects on my own, and I got to catch up to that. I, you know, now I'm starting some projects, and I, 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 I could feel God saying, there's a creative side of you that you're not fulfilling, my son. There are other parts of you that are, you are not uh, 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 feeding upon. Because God didn't make you a, a one pace human being. God didn't make you no a mannequin or nothing like that. There's a bunch of parts of you that you got to uh, 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 express, you know. But still come work to the ministry. Because <laughs> guess what? Y'all came today, and man, whew, the cameras, sound booths, security, ushers, musicians, hospitality. We need y'all. But get you some rest, too. Spend time with your family, too. Rest. Fishing and hunting, do that. If you like that, do that. If you want to learn something new that you never thought you could learn, learn, learn how to play piano, learn how to play the trumpet, learn how to play the, you know, I don't know, drums. Go ask Josh, he can give you some lessons. If you want to learn uh, uh, boxing, if you want to learn uh, 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 taekwondo, hey. <laughs> do that, my people. Some things you think you're too old to learn to do right now, get, throw that out of the water. You're too old to learn this, you're too old to learn, you're too old to, to go back to school. Do it, my people. Amen. It's our season. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you got to know that. When you go into things, you got to know that it's your season. 
Your season, uh, 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 it's up. Your season is here. Your season is around the corner. Or like the old people say, around the counter. <laughs> but let me, let, me, let me give you something, Minister Sam going to know this, because he's done it to me before. Jamie, you don't want God to make you lie down. So, so <laughs> he, right here, he's asking you, you know, you know he's saying, I'm making you lie down. But in, in this context, he's making you lie down is something good right now. We're going to get to the green pastors. But if, if, if you can excuse the context and move out a little bit, sometimes God will make you lie down, as in <laughs> put a little pain in your life. <laughs> you, you're not listening to me. You're not listening to your body. You're not listening to the promptings that I'm giving you. You need to rest. But a loving guy sometimes make you lie down. And as a sheep, Miss Miss Brandy, huh? I got you back. There. I see you. Sometimes, <laughs> if anything, anybody know anything about a, a shepherd? Sometimes the shepherd gotta break the sheep leg and put them on his shoulders and carry them because that sheep is not listening. That sheep keep going, trying to go this way. She trying to go in the ditch. She keep trying to go pet the lions, pet the bears. Yeah, yeah. And 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 guess what? Why 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 God call us sheep? You know what I'm saying? Because we do the same thing. We know the truth, Minister Sam. We know what this Bible says, Minister Miss Lou. We know Kylie. We know Pop. We know what to do, but we keep doing what we're not supposed to do. We're drawn to it. Sometimes God got to break your leg. Now, now, what that mean? You put, you put that under your uh, line. Sometimes God got to put you in the hospital. <laughs> Some, sometimes, I'm going to say it the wrong way, but y'all going to know what I'm saying. Sometimes God sometime got to put you broke. <laughs> Sometimes God got to put you broke so you can understand where your help come from. You can understand, <laughs> you see, you, you're trusting in that moolah too much. You're trusting in that, that, that them chips and them dip too, too, too much. I got to make you broke. Sometimes you got to make you lie down to get some understanding. And Hebrews, you know what I'm saying? You know, we stiff neck and stubborn. Let me tell you something, we stiff neck and stubborn. Sometimes a guy got to get the jack in my eye. <laughs> sometimes he got to get the shotgun out. Sometimes he got to get the AK out. Sometimes, hey, sometimes he got to throw a wrench in your bicycle spokes. You're not getting no understanding. I, 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 I didn't try to do it the right way. Deacon <laughs> Calvin, he got them sons. Sometimes you got to pull the rod out. You're not listening, my people. Sometimes you got to make it your lie down. Now, let me tell you something, Maris. You don't want to go that route. Let me give you some advice. You don't want to go that route. You want to listen to before to get the ride out. Because guess what? It don't feel good, no. Man, when God puts you, make you lay down, when God break your ankle, when God got to break your foot and put you over his shoulder, that don't feel good because you, the, 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 and, then, and then the other thing about it is you knew better. So when, when your leg get broken, when you get uh, 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 low, put down on a low level, you, 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 you lose your job. <laughs> look, man, God got plenty of ways to get your attention. Yes, sir. But look, you want to choose the good way. Amen. You don't want to choose the way that he got to break your leg. <laughs> I didn't bend that route. It don't feel good, Joshua. It don't feel good. So choose the right way. How, how, how Minister Brown said, make the right choice. Make the right choice. You don't want to go this route, my people. So point E. <clears throat> he says in verse 2, he making me lie down. We just talk about making, making me lie down. But David saying green pastors. <laughs> And when we talk about green pastors, this is a good thing. Because when you see some green, you know that it's alive. You know that it has been fed the right things. You know that it has been nourished the right thing. When you see something green, you know that it has been fed the right things and nourished the right way. These pastors are tender grasses. Not hard, soft, tender grasses. Grass that is softened. I don't know this word, but soft to the skin. <laughs> it's fun to be in. It's 
fun to lay down in. It's fun to even grab and look at these green, these green uh, leaves and everything. Like I said, you know, it's full of uh, uh, nutrients. Me, me and a few of the brothers the other day was talking about, uh, about meat, you know. Sometimes people, I, I, I'm at the belief, and don't quote me on it, it's not concrete in, in, in thought and facts, but the problem I don't think is just the meat, or, or the meat, should I say. It's what the meat eats. What I mean by what, what the cow eats, what the chicken eats, what this, that, it eats. Because what they eat go in their body and you eat it. Because the proof is when you eat grass-fed beef, there's more nutrients. You, you, you thrive more. You, 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 your skin gets better. Your hair gets better. I've read these things. Grass-fed beef. So I, I took that correlation when I thought about that. So if God is making you lie down in green pastures, that means he want to nourish you. <laughs> that means he wants to make you better. That means he wants to make you cleaner. That means he wants to make you a, a better believer, a better person. He wants to nourish you. God don't want to uh, disnourish you. That, that, that's not right. What's the word? Malnourished. Malnourished. Hey. God, I just learned that, my will. <laughs> Thank you. My teachers, my teachers. I might need to take a class with y'all. <laughs> you don't, God does not want to malnourish you. God does not want to destroy you. God does not want to give you the worst things. He wants to give you the best things. <laughs> know that. So when you look at him say it's green pastors, we can also think of this as the word of God. Amen. Matthew 4.4 4 says, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. John 6.35 says, And Jesus says to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. He who believes in me shall never thirst. <laughs> Jeremiah 15, 16 says, your words were found and I ate them. Oh, other scriptures we can, uh, on our own time, Romans 10, 17, John 15, 5, John 17, 13, Amos 8, 11. When you got some time, read those other scriptures. But, even though he gives us the word of God, we got to go and get the word of God. You being here tonight at Bible study is a testament of what you want to happen in your life. You want to be nourished. You want to be uh, 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 laid down in green pastures, my people. You want to be like that cow eating that grass so your inside could be full, sanctified, made new, the renewing of the mind being happened, the, 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 the changing of your ways, your thoughts, your actions is being gone, it's happening, it's, it's, it's making sense now. That's what you want to be doing at this time, my people. He making me lay down in green pastures. So point F, he leaded me. Carl, I don't know about y'all, but I've asked God for direction so many times. Sister Haula, I've asked God direction. You want to be led by somebody that knows everything, somebody that knows the future, knows the past, knows what's going on right now. You want to be asking that God, asking that person that has that ability and that uh, uh, power and that strength about directions. That then been here a long time, way more years than before you. You want to be seeking direction, my people, about everything in your life. And I'm not talking about specific things. Sometimes he's going to tell you what to eat. Sometimes he's going to tell you what to wear. But we're not talking, man. We're talking about the important things about your life. You know what I'm saying? He might tell you to go this direction, go that direction, you know. But we don't want to think that God tells you to do all those things. You know, he, he would be uh, 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 making us some robots. But no, in this word, he says in verse 2, of Psalm 23. He making me lie down in green pastures. He leaded me. You see, the sheep, the, the, the shepherd, uh, 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 the sheep had a very bad sense of direction. Some say they don't even have no direction at all. And, and us as sheep, sometimes we don't have no direction at all. And sometimes we need God to, to push us and prod us in a certain direction. 
his providential hand, uh, 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 we want to allow it in our life to where he, 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 he you, you know, you, you, you're getting wrecked, to where you lose your keys, to where you, your car won't start to protect you and, and get you in a certain direction where he wants you at. Sometimes he does that. Sometimes he uses whatever he got to get you where he needs you, to protect you. But I don't know about y'all, I want to be led by the Father. <laughs> hey. And we have access to that leading by just asking. A lot of us don't even ask. A lot of us don't pray and ask God for direction because we think we got it. I've been doing this, God. I got this. I know where to go. But believe me, God could take the understanding out of your mind and you're, gonna know, you're not going to know how to walk out these doors. So you got to think back. You need God to lead you and direct you. Take you by the hand. Guide you. We need God to lead us, my people. <laughs> I'm a, I, sh sh sheep or dumb, my people. I, I can't say it no better than that. <laughs> you know, if, 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 if we don't get leading by God, we're going to walk over that cliff. <laughs> don't, don't think it can't happen, my people. Don't think it can't happen. Don't be so prideful enough to think you can't walk over that cliff without his leading and direction and prompting. Ain't that right, Ms. Linda? You know what I'm saying? So let God lead you. If you ask, you will receive it. If you ask, you will receive it. So point G, besides the still waters. <laughs> In the end of verse 2, he says, he leaded me besides the still waters. He will not leave, lead us into troubled water, Jamie. You can trust that God will not lead you into troubled water. God will not lead you into places that's going to hurt and harm you. It may feel like it, but he might scratch you so you don't get your arm cut off. He might get you to have a hangnail so you won't get your foot cut off. He'll allow those things. But trust me, from the bottom of his heart, he don't, want you, he don't want to lead you into troubled water, my people. <laughs> you got to know what type of God you serve. You see, we got to also understand that dogs, if you didn't have a dog, dog going to eat out of everything. Dog going to drink out of anything, should I say. Dog going to eat out of tr troubled waters. Dog going to eat in a uh, uh, rabbit, just, you know, just anyway. But a sheep, a sheep will not drink out of troubled waters. <laughs> A sheep will not drink out of troubled waters. <laughs> and y'all see the correlation? Y'all see the correlation? But any good shepherd know also that he will not take his sheep in troubled waters because they have a tendency to drown, because they cannot swim, because they are completely uh, at the mercy of their shepherd. And you got to know without the leading of your shepherd, <laughs> you're going to drown. At the leading of your shepherd, you're going to be lost in those troubled waters. Look at all the things that's happening right now, all the trouble that's going on. You think you could live the rest of this life without God guiding you? Without God taking you out of those troubled waters? Just, and, and it's so amazing as he is, even if you fall in troubled waters, he's going to come get you. That's how amazing God is. Even when you, you do something that is against his will, he so much want to love you and give you mercy and grace that he going to come get you out of that stuff and say, all right, let's start again. Let's try again. Yes, sir. He not going to let you fall in troubled waters. He going to come get you. Now, sometimes he use people <laughs> to do his work. Yes, sir. Sometimes we don't realize the help is right there, but we're looking at the hand. We're not looking at God. I don't want that hand touching me. But boy, you're about to drown. I didn't send this, I didn't send that. But you're looking at the hand. Sometimes God sends others, like your brothers and sisters, your shepherd, your under shepherd over here, your ministers and your deacons. Let us help you. Let us help you. Stop slapping my, stop biting the hand that feeds you. <laughs> Everybody in here should know that by now. Don't just talk about it, live it. Stop biting your hand that feeds you. Because guess what? That hand going to slap you one day. That hand going to let you go. All right, you want to keep biting? Ain't nobody going to keep you around if you keep biting their hand. 
You think I'm gonna keep, Minister Sam, you gonna keep feeding that dog that keep biting your head? Oh no, you're gonna do something else to her. I know what you're about. Let me tell you something. So Hebrews to your leaders. Hebrews to your bosses. Hebrews to those that's in authority over your life. Stop biting that hand that fed you. <laughs> Stop biting that hand. Stop biting that hand. Stop. Don't even nibble at it. Because <laughs> sometimes, at least, you see, my mama got a little dog, and his name is Dunamis. He got a Christian name. He got a Hebrew name. But we didn't have a lot of dealings together, me and him. Yeah, he ain't nothing but he big like this. But he knew it's all right to nibble at my hand. We playing. But when the bite get a little harder, he gonna go across the room. <laughs> but know that you shouldn't be even nibbling at the man that feeds you. <laughs> and what I mean by nibbling, talking about him behind his back. And what I mean uh, uh, by nibbling, <laughs> when he make a decision, you in the background shoo shooing. Oh, I wouldn't have done that. Well, you're not the leader. Of course you wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have let you leave me in the first place. <laughs> nibbling, don't nibble. Matter of fact, don't even have no thoughts about it. When those thoughts come in your mind, rebuke it in Jesus' name. Jesus name. You know? I don't know where I went with that, but yeah. <laughs> Our shepherd wants us to lead, our shepherd wants to lead us to a place of trust, to a place of rest, <laughs> to a place of confidence, a place where you rely on him and focus on him without anything that will distract you. Still waters. Y'all ever heard of that word, still waters? Yes. This word, still waters, in, in, in the Hebrew means menu koth. Menu cough. That sounds like a clothing line. You got that new menu cough? No, I, I want 10% of y'all started. <laughs> Which means restful waters and refreshment. <laughs> One thing I also knew, uh, Deacon, Deacon Calvin, I'm a fine or not, you know, drink your water. That's a little nugget. Drink your water. I've learned how important it is to drink water. Man. I tell you, my body be fighting when I don't drink water. Yes, it's just not right. I, I know I'm getting old and my body is acting a little funny, a little different, but drink your water because your body needs water. You can go days without eating, but there are a few days you can go without drinking water. Amen. And what I mean by this is get the water of the word. Amen. <laughs> get the water of this word. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 to 30 says, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and, it, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. <laughs> Tonight, some of y'all may be right here feeling malnourished. Tonight, some of you have come here, you got soaking wet, but inside, you are uh, 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 full of thirst. You are hungry and thirsty for something you have not know of. You may have heard about Jesus Christ, you may have heard about God, but you don't make the correlation that you need that, Sister Paul. The, the people in here that have called Jesus Christ their Savior knows about the fulfillment, knows about the thirst that is uh, uh, God has quenched, know about the, 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 the hunger that, 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 that God has, 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 has fulfilled. Amen. We know that. But there are some in here tonight, you are malnourished. Something in your life is not right. You've tried this and that, you've tried that and this, but it's not fulfilled you. You just have that same emptiness inside of you. When you don't eat and when you don't drink, that same feeling you have that inside your spirit. And let me tell you today, today you can get those things uh, uh, quenched. You can get that hunger uh, fulfilled by accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior. You see, he died on the cross 
just for you. Like, 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 like you want to make a, 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 a God, a personal God like David did? You make God your God today. And how you do that? A, admit that you are a sinner. You see, a lot of us don't like to admit that we got a problem. <laughs> that we got something wrong in us. We, we don't like to admit that we have something broken inside of our hearts. We don't like to admit that we have no peace, that we are in troubled waters. But today, tell God, I have, troubled, I have a troubled heart. I do not have peace in my life. You gotta admit to God, admit to somebody that something is not right. I have, I have an empty hole inside my heart that needs to be filled. And I filled it with so many other things besides Jesus Christ. I filled it with men. I filled it with women. I filled it with drink, drugs. I filled it with uh, food. I filled it with having nice things. I filled it with clothes, tennis shoes, all those things. But I never felt fulfilled. But I'm saying today, if you admit. And secondly, believe that Jesus Christ is the one that's going to quench that thirst, the one that's going to uh, answer that, uh, fulfill you, feed you, so you can uh, stop being hungry. You got to believe that he is the one. Let me tell you something. I can line up everybody in here that is a believer and, and admit and testify what God has done for them in their lives. How God has fulfilled so many answered questions. How many times they have came, how God has came through for them when they call God for help. You got to believe. This stuff is true, my people. This stuff is true. And see, you got to confess. You got to ask God. You got to tell God, yeah, I do have some things wrong with me. I do. And you got to trust and believe that Jesus Christ did die on that cross for you. Because the wages of sin is death. And we got to know that Jesus Christ died to, 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 to get you and make you have peace with God. He sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, just for you. <laughs> if ain't nobody think you're important, trust that Jesus Christ thinks you're important today. Because 2,000 years ago, he died on that cross just for you. And everybody under the sound of my voice, bow the heads and repeat after me. And remember, it's not the prayer, but it's the heart behind the prayer. And if you need to be given the faith to believe, you can ask God, give me faith to believe in, about a, in what I'm about to say to you. And everybody repeat after me. Dear God, forgive me. Dear God, make me new. Fill me up. Save me. Holy Spirit, come inside of me. Make me new. Fulfill this thirst. And feed this hunger. Thank you, dear Lord, for saving me, making me new, and I need you to lead me. Besides, still waters. And I say all these things in Jesus' name. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Just want to say a little benediction to, towards y'all, for y'all. Father God, I'm thanking you, Father God. And I'm asking that, Father God, you reward every person that came out here tonight, Father God. They could have stayed home. They could have been fearful of the weather. But, Father God, they chose to come out and serve. And, Father God, be with you, Father God, and hear your words. So I'm praying that you would reward them for diligently seeking you, dear Lord. So, Father God, I'm praying that you get them back home safely, dear Lord. That everything be better, Father God, than when they left it, Father that no hurt, no harm was done to their animals, their houses, or family members, dear Lord. So, Father God, we thank you, and we want to give you glory and honor. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name, amen, amen.
Love y'all. Y'all be safe out there.